Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, from last week's video, I was asked if I would do a video on how to increase your speed while coding. So I just sat down a couple of minutes and wrote down five things off the top of my head, and I want to share those items with you. Let me first minimize my box. All right, let me share these five items with you. First, know your classification. Know that ICD 10 CM code book, know that CPT code book, and know your HCPCS code codebook. In the ICD 10 CM code book, you should know right where to go on to find the neoplasm table, the table of drugs and chemicals, the external cause of dis uh, injury alphabetic index, and even your alphabetic index and tabular list. In your CPT manual, not only alphabetic index at the back of the book, but know all of the appendices, A through R, in the CPT book, particularly Appendix A, which is of the modifiers. And then know your six sections of CPT with the HCPCS book, the table of drugs. You need to know where to find the drug because it might state 25 milligrams and you need to code 50 milligrams. Therefore, you know to double the code. So again, and even dental codes, so many times I'm asked, coach, where are the dental codes? I'm in the HCPCS book and I can't find the dental codes. And I have to remind the students that dental codes are in a separate classification. They're in a, in a they're still HCPCS, but the dental codes are in a separate book. With knowledge of your classifications, with knowledge of all three of these classifications, you can move quickly. I always tell my students, love your code book and it will love you back. It's just like when you're getting to know someone, you spend time with them, you find out what they like, what they don't like. But when you're learning medical coding, you've got to spend time in these classifications. You've got to get a better understanding of exactly what the reason, the, the, the well, how do they say it? What, where, why, how, etc. for all of these classifications. You should know this. And that will increase your speed because you'll know right where to go. Number two, have knowledge about what you are coding. Again, medical terminology is so important. You've got to know that language of medicine. You've got to know the difference between a ureter and a urethra. There is a difference. Also, famili familiarity of what to look for. When coding infections, I know I need to go to the lab work in the medical record to find what type of bacteria caused the infection. Same thing with fractures. Your physician will tell you it's a fractured femur, but we've learned with ICD-10 CM, there's greater specificity than we had with ICD-9. And if he says a fractured femur, was it the neck? Was it the shaft? That specificity is there now with ICD-10. And that x-ray will tell you exactly where on the femur the fracture occurred so that then we can code it with greater specificity. Number three, know the setting that you are coding for. If you're an inpatient coder, you're coding those ICD-10 CM diagnoses and you're coding the procedures with ICD-10 PCS. If you're an outpatient coder, you're still coding the diagnoses with ICD-10 CM, but the procedures, because you're an outpatient, you're coding the professional side of coding, you're gonna use CPT. And number four, know if you are a professional coder or a facility coder. Who do you code for? For example, emergency room coders. I've been emergency room coder before. For the physician, I generated the ENM code for the physician, but for the facility, I have to take in consideration critical care nursing, even ancillary services such as EKGs and ultrasounds, etc. So know if you are a professional coder or a facility coder. And number five, find your rhythm. Find your rhythm. 
block out those distractions. When I'm reading or I'm studying, I need silence in my room. My children, for some reason, can't read or study without noise, music playing in the background. But block out whatever distracts you so that you can get in your rhythm and you can code and you find yourself moving, moving, going, going, going. And when you find that you're losing your rhythm, stop, take a break, get some water, walk, go to the bathroom, do whatever so that you can come back refreshed and find that rhythm again and keep going. Okay, guys, these are just five things off the top of my head. Leave your comments below. What suggestion, what ideas can you leave for others that helps you increase your speed when you code? All right, guys, keep the suggestions coming in. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.